Philippinen auch noch fest. Hi, I'm Dennis Gage and welcome to My Classic Car. Well, this week we're at the BMW Zentrum in Greenville, South Carolina for the European Auto Fest. This show's been going on for 17 years and there is some stuff here I have never seen. Fabulous autumn day in South Carolina. Let's go Euro. German Kubelwagen. This is a wild machine. Barry, how you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing great. Good to have you with us, Dennis. Wow, what a great show. You know, you, you've been after me for a few years to get down here. Finally made it work in the schedule. And I am so glad. This is a stunning show. And what a great facility the, the BMW Centrum here is. What a great place for a show. Oh, this, BMW's been our host for 17 years. They're a wonderful host. The facilities are great. What's not to like? And several hundred really, really amazing cars. <laughs> This year, every uh, more people have said to me this year that the quality of the cars, the condition of the cars is just superb. So we would just really, it, we're really proud to have all these people here. We really, I mean, there's stuff here that I've never seen. Some really kind of oddball stuff, you know? Uh, we like to call it rare. Well, it's, that's, that's probably a better <laughs> term. That's probably a more fitting term. But really, really some unique things that, that I don't know, it, it seems like they come to this show just because it's such a great show. Well, it, uh, part of the thing that they come to is we have cars that are kind of rough case shape and then some that are concourse condition. But you hit all, I mean, pretty much all Euro marks, right? Yes, you got BMW, yes, all Euro you got marks. Mercedes, you got, you got, you know, a lot of Italian marks, mm -hmm. certainly a lot of British here. It's really cool. And again, some really wild stuff. There's a few that you might have to explain to me. Let's go check out a few. Okay. Beautiful. I love it. Thanks a lot. I, I love your car. Well, Paul, I actually can't believe there's a Marcos at this show. I mean, I I love these cars. I've only seen four of them in my life, and this is the finest one I've ever seen. This is a 1970 Marcos. Right. right? But they're really interesting cars. They're actually a British car. Right. Mm -hmm. The original ones had a plywood frame, which is the weirdest thing. I could never figure out how you could do this thing in plywood, but it seemed to work. Well, it, it did work, and uh, they, they still race those early cars in England. But they are also <clears throat> about the littlest car, the lowest car. Yeah, I think they're only like 40 inches. Yeah, because man, you really, you almost have to take an elevator <laughs> down into this thing. So that's a real Jaguar-esque dash with the rocker switches and the gauge placement and stuff. Is that, is that the original dash? Yes. Wow. In fact, that's the original shortwave radio that came in. Wow. And it works. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> and what a little shifter. I mean, it's like, yeah. just click, 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 click right there, man. Oh, geez, I love this. Now this used a lot of parts off of different cars. I mean, that the, the door handles were... I MGB. Mean, they were trunk, though, or yeah, something, right? Yeah, it was a trunk latch. And then this, your gas filler? It's off of a Norton Commando motorcycle. motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> but what a, you know, what a great rear end this has got. You know, a little, little kick up here and the, and the, you know, the haunches. It just, man. Now, these came with a, I mean, lots of different engines. But this one's got one of the cooler engines. Let's go look at that. Okay. And there also, it is, easy very, to work on. Very E-type in the way it opens. Mm -hmm. Wow, so you got a V6 in this thing. Yeah, it's a three liter Essex V6. It was an England only V6. The valve covers are kind of offset mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. That's really weird, I've never... So this baby weighs next to nothing, doesn't it? Around 2,000 pounds. Oh, I'm surprised it's that much. And what's the suspension setup? I mean, does it handle pretty well? Or... It handles very well. It doesn't even need an anti-sway bar on the front. It sits so low. Um, Paul, this is just, I mean, this is stunning. I, I love these cars. I've always loved them. I've only seen four of them in my life. This is far and away the best one I've ever seen. I, I want this car. <laughs> I want, you, you probably, you probably, no. no. You can't have it. No. Well, I looked for it for too long. Too long. Well, I'll just keep looking at it. Paul, thanks for bringing it out. Okay. 70 Marcos. I love this baby. Okay, great. Wow. I was eating a cookie and my tooth fell out. The reason I wear a hat is because after this, I will pass it around. You'll give me all your keys. Okay. <laughs> well, John, there's you know a raft of Rolls Royces here at the European Auto Fest, but this one sort of stood out to me. This is an interesting car. A EXP for Experimental 44, Phantom 5, 1957, and they experimented with this car until 1963. So, what were the innovations in this Experimental P5? 
Well, they come out with their first V8 engine with this car. Oh, really? Wow. So, so they had an experimental V8, yeah. and then they have an experimental electric windows, oh, and then they got an experimental air conditioning in 57. Wow. Now, you've had this thing for, for how long? 20 years. 20 years. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, big, long hood like you'd expect with Rolls, but what a, you know, what a fabulous interior this, this baby has. And is this the original, or has this been restored, too? No, this is the original interior wow. that was put in it in 57, the original wood, carpet, leather, Everything is original. It's gorgeous. And obviously, it's you know made to be chauffeur driven. Usually, we can get the whole interior in one shot, but I think we'll move back. This is a big car. <laughs> is this a limo? I mean, right. Considered a limo. This this was made as a limo. And it's got jump seats on on each side. You right. can fold them down or have them up. Correct. Holy cow! And again, I mean, just the woodwork in it, the grill walnut on the ashtrays. Right. She's absolutely beautiful. One of the other things you would say they experimented with were, were French tail lights, right? That's correct. It looks like a, a custom job. Right. It they, looks they, like somebody customized right. the rolls. They have been tucked back up in there, and that's the way it was when it was new. Do you drive this at all, or is it just a show car? I have owned this car 20 years, and I've driven it about a thousand miles in 20 so years. So not too much. Not too much. That's been a fun thousand. Oh yes. Yeah. Let's, let's go have a look at that V8. All right. Open that baby up, John. All right. Oh, you can't, uh, how do you get to that? Well, oh. you, un you undo a latch. That's pretty weird. And you raise up this large breather, and then you have an original cable that comes down to hold it in, in place. Holy cow, she's a V8, and those are still uh, SU carburetors, aren't they? That's correct. Man, is that like HD8s or something? There? Right. Wow, so it's packed in there. How do you, I mean, I can't even see the spark plugs. How do you, <laughs> how do you change the spark they're plugs? Way down in, they're way down <laughs> under the head. <laughs> Well, beautiful car, 57 rolls. What is it? Phantom 5. Phantom 5, EXP 44. 44, B5, amazing. Thanks for bringing it out, John. Thank you. Well, Chris, we're at the, you know, the BMW North America Center here. It should be appropriate that we do a BMW. And, and I think the one to do is the one that I, I think put BMW on the map in North America, the 2002. Now they imported some stuff before that, right? Yeah, they, they had a uh, 1502, uh, 1602, and 1802. Which they, they came to the U.S., right. but man, I, I can't even remember seeing those. But, but when people finally went, oh, BMW, it was this car they were talking about. Right. They're great little cars. You know, they, you know it, it's, a, it's a compact car, but with still a fair amount of room inside, certainly in the front. I've never personally sat in the back of this car. <laughs> You're pretty, pretty big boy, I'm not yeah. sure. <laughs> but um, for a, a small car, it, it is it is roomy inside. And this is all the stock gauge layout, except you've added a couple of gauges up top. Yeah, I uh, have an oil pressure and um, oil temperature gauge. I had to add those for what I've done to the motor. Yeah, you want, you want to know what's going on. Right. I love the wheels on them, too, So on, on this. What, what are those? Those are um, OZ Mitos. Have you powder coated them? Yeah, ah. I, I've had them powder coated. Looks good, though. So. Like I said, this was a, a two-liter car, and they were pretty zippy, you know, pretty good performing cars, but you have zipped it up a little bit I've from there. I've zipped it just you a little. You zipped it a little. Let's go look and see what bit. that is, man. <laughs> just a little bit. I like how that opens. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, mm, that's not a stock 2002 engine there. No. This, no, thing, it, looks, this thing looks fairly serious. What have you done here? It's got uh, 12 and a half to one compression, 48 millimeter side draft Weber carburetors, a Shrek 328 cam, M3, rods and M3 pistons out of the E30 M3. So it's like a baby M3 almost now. It, basically. Wow. We've put some stabilization up here, stiffened it, it up a bit. It, well, I mean, this, uh, you know, I mean, this looks pretty serious. I mean, you must, you must do some track time with this. Yes. I autocross it and I'm actually a driving instructor at a uh, track up in Beaver Falls. So that would that would kind of explain this obsession you have for, yes. <laughs> for performance and power. So what kind of horsepower is this little baby now pump, pumping out? It, it probably has somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 horsepower. In a car that weighs? Roughly 2,300, 2,400 pounds. So she's a little screamer. Yeah. Wow. Well, you brought a pretty awesome little car. Very subtle, you know, I mean, it's, but you can, if you look at it for a little while, you go, you know, I think that's a little bit beefier than your basic 2002. We didn't want it to look like a race car. We yeah. wanted it to look like a stock 2002, but when somebody was out in the track and said, oh my God, that car is really fast. So this is basically dad's 2002 on steroids. Basically, that's what it is. Chris, thanks a lot, man. All right, Dennis, thank you. 2002.
Richard, I have never seen one of these. I have never even heard of one of these. This is a 56 Jensen 541, 541, right? Yes, it is. Well, it's 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 a fiberglass car, right? It's all fiberglass. The door skins are aluminum. I saw you driving in. I was like, what is that? I got to find this guy. She's sitting up so high it almost looks like a gasser, you know? <laughs> but it has this weird louvered front. It's a manually operated flap. When it's closed off, it decreases the drag and makes the car more air efficient. But if it starts overheating, there's a manual lever next to your knee that you can open or close the flap as needed. So you're just watching your, your temperature gauge mm -hmm. and deciding you if you need to give it some air. Yes. What a great interior, though. Obviously restored. It is, yes. But this would have been the way she looked, and even these, you know, really delicate seats? It is. The interior, when I got it, it was all bodged up, if you will. So I just found some period photographs and had a fella to rebuild it according to the photographs. I love how the, the window crank and the door handle are indented mm -hmm. in, the, in the side panel there. I mean, that makes sense. You're not banging your knees on them and everything. It's, it's gorgeous. You know, a lot of headroom in this, because you're a tall guy. I am. It's tough to get into, but it's okay once, once I you're get there. in. <laughs> so these lights here, are these the, the turn, turn signals? They are. They're the turn signals. What a curious placement, you know? Well, they are. I think this was in a period of time when they were moving from the trafficators, the arms that right, flip out. Right, right, right. They were always mounted usually up high. So let's put the light there. Let's put the light there. <laughs> but this is the craziest rear window, back window I've ever seen. It's very unique. It's uh, Perspex or plastic. Okay, and so the trunk opens out this way. It right? is. It flips to the back. And this is all. This is all uh, fiberglass. Also, all fiberglass. This has also got a really wild engine. Let's go look at that. Okay. The whole. That's funny because, like a lot of British cars, the whole front end basically opens up, but it opens this way instead of instead of at you. Mm -hmm. That's a massive six cylinder. Like basically a four liter six. Four liter six. With three side draft carburetors, HD8s or? HS4s. HS4s. SUHS4s. And that is one honking radiator you got there. That's one reason <laughs> the car ran cool, apparently. It has a very large radiator. Yes. Gosh, I'll say. So you could get away with closing that, uh, that louver down and. That was used frequently to close it off in competitive driving. So does this get a lot of attention because people just don't know what it is when you take it it places. is a unique car yes so a lot of people are drawn to it as i guess i was in the beginning <laughs> apparently so if you went to wales for it but well, i tell you caught my eye 1956 jensen 541 yes thanks for bringing it out richard you're welcome thank you dennis wild machine well gregory this is one of my favorite cars, the, the, the Maserati Ghibli. And this is a 1969? Nine, correct. Absolutely beautiful car. Well, I love the lines of these. You know, it's such a wedge, mm, and they're really surprisingly wide. For the time, it's pretty yeah, wide, yeah, it but really pretty is. fluid also. Very much so. And is it a steel body? Steel. Mm -hmm. And doors also, is it all steel? Yeah, or? all oh, steel. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that kind of squashed windshield, raked way back. Beautiful. And. I imagine you had to redo the interior completely also? All the interior has been dismantled and sent to Lupi in Italy. Really? <laughs> so it's been redone with the original letter, uh, exact good color, um, stitching is original, so it's been mm. done like it's supposed to be. I've always, I have always wanted one of these cars, and there was a time when they were fairly affordable. Mm -hmm. They aren't anymore. I mean, no, they're, they're going no. expert. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I always wondered though, with this massive back window, does it get kind of hot in there? It is. Yeah? It is. I mean, you still have the AC in the car, uh, which it was works. optional. It's working, but it just avoids you to be soaked wet. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the main thing. You look really good in it all the time. <laughs> and you know, the rear end is also just gorgeous. I love how these are cut in, but it's just extremely European. Not too much chrome like the American cars of the time. Yeah. Just the good balance between chrome and... Just really clean, yeah, really clean. clean. Now these are powered by a, a V8, right? Correct, a 4.7. Let's go look at that. Great looking air cleaner. Maserati logo. Yeah. So these were these came in 4.7 and 4.9, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, the 4.9 was called the SS version. A little bit more capacity, uh, just higher compression ratio. Now this was originally a 4.7, but when 4 .7. you did the restoration, did you? We upgraded to the SS version. So it was boards, different piston for the compression ratio. It's a dual overhead cam. Dual overhead V8, cam, right? yeah. It, mm -hmm. Cams are right there. It's I mean, a dry sample also, which it? for the time for a, yeah, a road yeah. car was not common. 
Yeah, you know, one of the interesting things is that typically you'll open up an Italian car and you cannot figure out how to work on it because it's just so packed in there. This has actually got a fair amount of room, or is that not true? Is it deceiving? Yeah, it's deceiving. It's, <laughs> not, it's, it's not, more, not more difficult to work on those cars than any other one. I mean, it's just, if you know what you're doing, it's not more difficult not than any other ones. Now, does this get driven at all, or is it just a show car? No, no it's, for me, it's a shame to put a car yeah. in a good condition and not even drive the car or just, you know, oh, I start my engine once a month. No, just, no <laughs> drive it. Drive so it. is it wonderful to drive? I mean, do they drive beautifully? It's a beautiful car to drive. Well, I mean, close uh, it back down for me. Cause I just, I just love, absolutely love the lines of this car. I've always loved it. I've always wanted one. Someday, someday, I will own one. <laughs> Greg, this is a beautiful, beautiful car. 1969 Ghibli 4.7. All right. Beautiful. Thanks for bringing it out, man. You're welcome. Oh, man. The European Auto Fest here at the BMW Centrum in Greenville, South Carolina is an incredible show. There's some wild cars here, nice folks, and a really mellow setting. Check this one out.